business show in RVA on the mic with the mic in RVA. Hello from Washington, President JB here. Whenever Jill and I leave in our car, we tune in to our guy, Mike King Biz, on ESPN Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, on the mic, Mike, uh, Mike King here. That is, you may know who that is, or you may not, but I'm not saying. Uh, that's how we do here. We, we keep things on the low. We don't just give out our information on who our friends are. So uh, on the mic, Mike, the best business radio program around. I'm here with Mike King. Coming to you from the Mike King Biz Studio. We talk to the game changers out there. The studio is where great people come and they hang out. And sometimes the conversations start and then they turn into something. So we have Ryan from the American Heart Association. He just happened to be hanging out in, in the studio. And then we have Tiffany Green from Empower. Not the old people, Empower. It's the new and young and hip. M-P-W-R. And they're there to talk. So Ryan, really quickly, tell folks who you are and what you do. Yeah, so... Um... I'm with, like you said, I'm with the American Heart Association here in the Richmond office. Um, I just started in July, so I'm, I'm, I'm rather new. Yeah, no, um, but I have a very rich history in philanthropy. So it's really the only thing I've ever done was working with nonprofits. Um, I graduated college and went to Geisinger Medical Center in the northeast part of Pennsylvania, then Penn State Hershey Children's Shout Hospital. Geisinger. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still love Geisinger to this day. Yeah, it's it's a great children's hospital. That's really where I cut my teeth in fundraising. That was a lot of grassroots type fundraising. It was a lot of fun. Um, moved to Charlottesville in 2012, worked for UVA Children's Hospital for over 10 years before winding up here in Richmond. And so um, just a little bit something different, but, you know, it's a lot of just making those connections, making... and, and the best part about my job and wherever I went is working with people who want to make a difference in their community and are just purely altruistic. You know, there's, of course, there's things you can gain outside of that, but at the end of the day, we're helping our community. So that's my, that's my thing. That's, and I'm trying to network. That's why I'm hanging out with that's you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> he is here. And we're, we're going to get into some good stuff. Tiffany Green is here. We have a unique take on, on business, nonprofit, and the world of nonprofit business. All right, so really quickly, give us the elevator pitch. So Empower People is a nonprofit that provides education and connection to leaders so they can empower the people, organizations, and communities they serve. And we specifically help nonprofits and for-profits. Actually, one of the aspects of our mission is to actually bridge the divide between for-profits and nonprofits because they're siloed and they shouldn't be because at the end of the day, all organizations should be what? Purpose. Purpose driven. It's perfect driven. Because we've had a conversation and you schooled me on people worry about nonprofits always asking for money. Mm -hmm. And you say every business is asking for money. Mike, do you ask for money? Yes, I do. <laughs> Everything. So ladies and gentlemen, make sure you take care of sponsors and advertisers. Is that how I stay on the air? Because the microphone ain't free and my grandkids need stuff. So okay. that that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So before we came on here, really quickly, so Ryan had touched on the idea of the nonprofit world. You say that you help nonprofits because there's really not a lot of resources for nonprofits to get help. But you say there is a ton of resources for businesses. There's a ton of uh, resources for startup businesses. Um, and there's a lot of good um, government-backed entities, right? If you've heard of the That's small easy. business, yeah. Uh, every, every choose every. a letter out of the alphabet, right? So you got the SBDC, WBC, SCORE. Um, you have there. There's even more than that. There's a whole laundry list, and it's great that there's those resources out there. And the U.S. government also provides what SBA loans. So a lot of these entities who are going through these organizations are ultimately also trying to get some financial backing, some financial support. And what are they going to apply for? They're going to apply for an SBA loan. So who's best to equip them as an SBA funded agency? So that makes sense. But and nonprofit they don't target nonprofits. So where do nonprofits go? Most of the help, and I think Ryan will probably agree, is for nonprofits, help really doesn't begin. You know, small businesses, there's, like I say, resources for startups for small businesses. But most resources don't come into play for a nonprofit till they're at least oper in operation for three, and that's being generous, more likely five years. So there isn't a safe place, a good place for a nonprofit to turn to to get the assistance they need to get their business, because it is a business, off the ground. And what is the fundamental difference between a for-profit and nonprofit? Does anybody want to? I like to talk like I'm a teacher. So I'm, yeah, married, teacher, I'm though. married to a teacher, so this is familiar. That's familiar. Like, yeah, it's a... 
Yeah. Okay, what is the difference? Do you want to take a stab at it? Oh, sure. Um, it, they're very similar. You know, I've always, what, what I do as a development officer in fundraising, you know, it, I'm, I'm in sales, but I'm working for a place that has a cause. So I think my biggest thing would be the difference between for and nonprofit is that you're, both, you're running both as a business. You need to make money. The nonprofits are reinvesting those funds into the community or into their mission, whatever that would be. For us, it's expanding life and 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 making sure that everyone has those resources to, you know, take care of better care of your heart health. Mm-hmm. Um, a business, you know, reinvest in themselves and to expand their business so that they can continue, continue to go and 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 do work in 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 that industry. That's my guess. <laughs> It's good, and that's what the what the key phrase I think you said, Ryan, is the fact that a nonprofit re like whatever money, whatever revenues, however they're generating those revenue, whether it be through fundraising grants, and yes, they can sell things. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I've done it. I've lots done of it. nonprofits think I can't sell anything. No, that's not true. You can actually you're sell selling things. You're selling you're selling things every day. Yeah, if you're doing it right, yeah. Day. So you take that money and you reinvest it in the nonprofit organization. Whereas a for profit can do what bonuses. Right, they they can do what they yeah. want with the profit. They don't have to. They don't have to reinvest it in the business. Yeah. They should. They should. Well, yeah, at they least should. not the good ones are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the, they, there's no requirement to right. So that's the really at the end of the day, that's the only real difference between a nonprofit and a for profit. Now, for a nonprofit, this is what I teach my nonprofits. Why are you in existence? It all comes back to the theory of change. So every nonprofit exists for the theory of change. And that theory of change is meaning that there is a gap in your community that is not currently being met by any government funded program. So that nonprofit exists to fill in the gap. Huh, that sounds awfully familiar to what for profits do. What do they? I think they fill in a gap too in the marketplace. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's why I bring them in here. These folks are, are giving it to us different, differently. So the business model and a nonprofit model, not that, not that there's not a lot of difference. No, and when so when small businesses are the primary giver to nonprofits, everybody thinks it's all corporate donations and corporate corporate um, entities definitely are major sponsors. But actually, most of funding comes from small business. Now, here's the thing: if you're a, a, a nonprofit approaching a small business and you're begging and you're saying you don't understand, I'm different, you've created a wall. That small business is like, what, you think creating a small business from midair was easy? There's because there's really no difference. The thing that needs to match up is the purpose. That's what you and I discussed before, right? It's the purpose. So all organizations and all consumers these days, right? What are they looking for from their organization? Not just quality of product and quality of service and not just price point. They're, They're talking running. social and the, the social part. Social responsibility. So how can you be socially responsible in selling your widgets? By partnering with nonprofits that have the same purpose as you. And we've had that conversation. You you partner with someone who's in, in the area where you're in. What is the draw to nonprofit work, you guys? So you went to the nonprofit world and never left. Right. What is it that there's a draw to certain people who go to the world and never leave? As an employee or as, as a business? An, an employee. Well, you know, I you know, I had some you know, real, it's a professional instances where I had to kind of take a look as like, you know, I'm at an age right now where I can either make a career change and do something else, or I got to stick with this because, you know, you get to a point, it's hard, it's harder and harder to really get to make a shift. Absolutely. And I looked at that. I said, you know, like I said earlier, what I do is sales in a sense. I'm soliciting sponsorships. I'm soliciting donations. But what I'm doing is I'm selling you a tax write-off and a good feeling instead of that widget. So I could probably translate to for profit, but for me, I just feel like there's a bigger mission in myself. Like I want to help people that need the help. I want to help the community. I want to leave this world a better place than when I got here. And for my for my daughter, um, I, I want her to feel proud of what our family does. So to me, it's it, it's about altruism is the short answer to that is is why I choose not to leave. Tiffany, you operate in a nonprofit world. What what's the draw? And when you see yourself and you see them other people, like a lot of times I, I joke with people like, oh, I can tell you're you know you're in a nonprofit world because you have that save the world. You guys want it to be a better place than when you got here. 
Yes, I want to make the world a better, definitely a better place. That's the legacy I want to leave behind. So um, I think um, for a nonprofit, when you think about somebody who's working in the nonprofit space, you're thinking that they're being led by their beliefs, their values, and their heart more than by the dollars and cents. Um, and I think there's truth to that, but I'm going to say something um, that's probably not what a lot of people think of, which is there are for profits who can do the same too. It doesn't have to be one or the other. So really when you're choosing, this is my take mm -hmm. on it, for profit or not, -profit, I've worked in both spaces. It all goes back to the purpose. It's at the end of the day, <clears throat> nonprofit is, should be, um, a re the reason why you set up a nonprofit, like the reason why I empower people as a nonprofit is so we can keep our services priced at an affordable rate for the small business, micro business, and um, other leaders and nonprofits so they can afford it. So we're not focused on a profit to pay out, but we're keeping the money. It makes financial sense for those who are, we're trying to serve to make it a nonprofit. So I, I think at the end of the day, um, when you say the heart, I agree with you for the nonprofit, but I think we can expand that to for profit too. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, everybody's looking for that purpose driven leader. All righty. So we got Ryan here. Merkin. How can people find information out about you? Yeah. Um, the easiest way is the email. So uh, it's first name dot last name. So it's Ryan, R Y A N dot Leitner, L I G H T N E R at heart.org. Um, if you're interested in supporting us or just more information, I'm happy to help. Like I said, I'm still new. I'm learning this. It's a lot of fun. It's a great organization. And I will just make a, a little plug on this that even though the, we're the American Heart Association, the money that we raise here in Richmond stays in, in Virginia. So that's that's, that's, that's important. important. Yeah. Really quickly. So when we talk about nonprofits and a lot of times the ones I get here are, you know, one that has, you know, one or one and two thirds employees you know, 18 volunteers trying to change the world. When I have massy cancer in there, I'm like, hey, you know, people kind of look at you guys and you don't need the money because, you know, you guys have a ton. Talk a little bit about what that is when you're, when you're at a place and it is a nonprofit that people think has a ton of money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a, oh, that, that, Tiffany laughing right there. Like, come on. Because okay. nonprofit is a misnomer for a lot of people. People hear nonprofit, they think no money. Well, that is true. And all entities, nonprofit for profit, need what? Money. To, money to operate. To operate their mission. So, I mean, it, 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 I, you can't begrudge an entity for having money because if by having the money, they can do the good work. Isn't that phenomenal? When they look at like the St. Jude's Hospital or the Children's Hospital here, you understand the fundraising part because you don't have to pay. So they're offering services without a cost to the person who needs it the most. That means somebody got to go out there and ask for somebody's paying money. Somebody is paying. I like I like those two comparisons because I can actually speak a little bit to that. Do you know how much money St. Jude raises in, about, in, in a year? About I I can't imagine. It, it, Starts with a B. They're over a billion now. Ooh. Yeah. So, but they've aligned themselves a little bit better than someone like VCU and these higher education centered children's hospitals of having a need. And that message comes back to, you know, yes, we're helping these families with cancer. Uh, they don't pay for this either. Whereas like a lot of these children's hospitals that have that affiliation with the, the higher education systems, you know, they view that as, well, VCU's endowed. Like, why would they need my money? St. Jude is endowed too, let me tell you. They they spend a lot of money in marketing. Yeah, they do. And oh yeah, you get I those little things. Like Absolutely. I think the difference, Mike, is that St. Jude does a better job than anybody else of saying, This is we we are, we do need your money. It's, and it's Danny brand Thomas. messaging. It's brand messaging. Do you know how many do you know how many patients St. Jude treats in a year? Now I, I don't have like this information could be old. But last when I was working in the children's space, they only treat about fourteen hundred kids a year. That's not that's a lot, but they then they treat the sickest of the sick kids, and they're doing amazing research and they share it with everybody. It's a wonderful organization, but it's a very small population compared to a lot of these other bigger children's hospitals that treat more than just cancer or rare types of cancer. So, um, but they do a wonderful job of saying, we need the money, we need the help because they're using it and spreading that message out in that way. So when people say it's not about the money, it's always about the money. It is because the money helps the magic happen. Sure. Like you're saying, if you're bringing the sickest of the sick kids, 
1,400 kids or so from around the world to come here. The parent does not have to worry because before that time, the parent had to worry about this and that. There had to be some type of donor somewhere. And like you say, a lot of times it's big corporate business, but we were just in here with uh, the Children's Hospital Foundation uh, a couple weeks ago, and we had they were hidden here with uh, Jersey Mike's of Ashland. These guys have two or three locations, and they're out there really making magic happen. Dong's Karate School has given seven hundred and fifty thousand wow. dollars to the Children's Hospital Foundation. It's amazing. I ride by and I see that little karate thing. I'm just like, okay. But the person has made it their mission. It's the purpose. It's the purpose and it's the branding that goes along with it. Okay, uh, Tiffany, this is your area. Talk about the purpose, the branding, and put those together. And that translates into people wanting to to donate. Because I think uh, like Danny Thomas is Marlo Thomas. You know, you're, you're just helping them out. So one of the things that Ryan was talking about was like when you're asking, and I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, Tell you what I think, Ryan. You can agree or disagree. Sure. How's that? So when you're asking for a donation or somebody to sponsor something, but fundraising, right? Uh, I used this analogy with you before. If let's say um, you're going to let's say um, Empower People is looking for a sponsor, right? And so one of the, we want to who should we go after? How do we cast our net? We're going to look for people who what serve leaders, um, entrepreneurs executive directors well who, who who could that be well bmw is the number one seller of vehicles to leaders and entrepreneurs and executive directors so if i go to bmw and i say hey bmw dealership i have this nonprofit entity we're trying to help your your target market grow and thrive right would you like to help sponsor this event or sponsor this program now it's not I'm not trying to tug at their heartstrings, trying to get them to donate. I'm scratching an itch for them because what do they want to do? They want to sell to the people. One of my, Mike Tiffany is here. Yeah, Ryan said, we got to take a break for a moment. We will be right back. Hi, I'm Reba Hollingsworth with CBS 6, and I was on the mic with Mike and had a fabulous time. Make sure you tune in every week. Mighty Beers. Wow. On the mic with Mike, which means the new business radio platform. Judging how you judge, say we going corner. Nah, we just corner boys with the corner off. We got the cap table. What this is? Not that cap table, but we live this. Including how business can make the community better. No one does it better than Mike King Business. On the mic with Mike. Check it out. On the mic, Mike King back here. We got Ryan with the American Heart Association. We got uh, Tiffany Green with Empower. The new and hip way of saying Empower. Not like the, the school spelling bee. <laughs> you know, and, no, it's that. It's MPWR. We're talking nonprofit, the business world. So with, within the nonprofit world, there's a business nugget in there because a nonprofit has to run business-like to be able to provide the services that they that they offer. Yeah, and just like a small business, right? Most small businesses start because they're really good at something, right? So if you're an auto mechanic, you might start an auto mechanic shop, right? Yes. But what is the what is the thing they're probably lacking? Business All sense. the other things that that they yeah. don't know, and a nonprofit. So if I if I want to feed hungry children, you may be really good at organizing, try to feed the children. But what's the one thing that you might not be really good at? Need might need help. You might need help with the fundraising. So I look over or a business or, or a the business, business aspect of it. All the business stuff. So you were here dispelling the rumors and myths about there's a big difference between business and nonprofit, for profit and nonprofit. Correct. And another thing I'd like to say about nonprofits, and Ryan, you can chime in on this too, because he's a nonprofit guru <laughs> as well. Oh, uh, Tiffany is with that soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> that what we do here. So go ahead, ma'am, drop this nugget on us. When people think of nonprofits, they think, well, if you're in the nonprofit business, everybody's a volunteer. Nobody's making any money. Nobody has to feed their kids or grandchildren. Not true, right? So th there's nothing evil about an executive director or a staff being paid. They're being paid to fill in that gap, that need in the community. 
For sure. Just like you, you're being paid to be a. Uh, Whatever I am. Whatever I am. You you're, you're the partnership. Oh, that's it. You set them up. That's right. We're partnering people. So, uh, Ryan, let's let's talk about you guys have events that are coming up. I'm doing something with you guys, correct? Yeah, yeah. you are um our 2020 one of our 2023 leaders of impact. You know what? Now I've looked at the other leaders, and man, I'm like, there's some folks on that list. I'm like. Okay, I'm, I, what I'm going to be doing is, and shout out to my good friend, Annette Shore. Don't take this the wrong way. I'm going to be shaking my friends down for money to to help out the American Heart Association. That's what I'm going to be doing. So if you're a friend of mine, make sure you get ready. I'm coming. I'm coming for you, and I got a tin cup in hand. But we don't want money you can hear. We want that quiet money. That's right. Okay. So what is it called again? Leaders of Impact. So this is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign. Uh, this is rather new to our market. We did it uh, last year. Um, they hired me at the Heart Association to run this campaign. Okay. So they, it, it, we're, we're really focused on it. We really want to grow this. Uh, there's a lot of different benefits from a nonprofit standpoint, but I'll just touch a little bit about what this campaign is. So starting on September 29th, so coming up, it'll be here before you know it, there's a seven-week campaign. Where you and right now we have four other leaders of impact. I saw. Uh, yeah, and they're these guys are connected. And yeah, they yeah. Are. Uh huh. It's I got, so my, I got to really pull out the stop because some of those folks are Hunstall. Yeah. Leonard. Leonard. Yeah. Yep. And then when when your dad owns Fahrenheit, exactly. Parker. Who, yeah, he's he does not know yep. Fahrenheit advice. Exactly. So, exactly. So all my friends. Get ready, I'm coming. Yeah, and the great part, it's a it's a competition. So we're gonna, and you'll be honored at the Heart Ball, which is, you know, that is the premier fundraising event in, in Richmond. I haven't been, because I'm new, but I've seen pictures and everyone talks about it. Everybody talks about it is that. Wonderful. That is, that is the place. Yeah. But the thing is, Mike, at the end of the day, even though it's a competition and you want to win, so does Parker, so does Haley, so does Tunsil, so does Leonard, we're all raising money Great. to help a good cause and help the Richmond, the greater Richmond community. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be working together on this. I'm working with you and these other four leaders of impact to, to uh, have a very successful fundraising campaign. I think we're going to raise a lot of money, but it's also, you know, there's there's a promotion element. We're bringing a light on what the needs are of, of for the Heart Association, what our goals are to bring in resources to the communities, to bring in education, to bring in the research to help people live longer, healthier lives. And Tiffany, on the branding side of it, and we had talked about uh, branding in, in the nonprofit world. So do, when you look at a nonprofit, do you look at certain ones and go, wow, they really, from a branding standpoint, have their stuff together? What is it about that for a nonprofit? And is it any different than a for-profit business? There's no difference. There's no difference. <laughs> no. Be surprised by my answer. No, no, I am not shocked by your answer. <laughs> Good branding does good, not matter. Good branding matters for both nonprofit and for profit. And the message, the purpose has to be clear and it has to be consistent every single time. So before we went to break, you were talking about the uh, the idea of who to go to. A lot of times people think they're going to cast a net out, and I'm going to talk to everybody who is going to help me get to where I want to go to. And you say that's not the way. No. So you got to know, like, whatever your purpose is, you are actually out there seeking those who have share a similar purpose as yours, whether you're looking for strategic partners, whether you're looking for donors, whether you're looking for clients or customers, you're looking for people who have a shared purpose. When you do that, I always say, would you rather fish in the open ocean or would you rather fish in a stock pond? You want to fish in a stock yes. pond. So what, what, what creates that stock pond? is shared purpose. That's really what creates it. So if Mike King's looking for people to participate in your radio program and you're purpose driven and you're trying to make Richmond a better place, you're going to seek others who want, want the same thing. Yeah. And I think specifically to what we're talking about here too, I mean, it's the, the easiest uh, target would be to look at the mission and to look at uh, cardiovascular health and supporting people with that cause. So a lot of people might have a story. I mean, we all have some sort of story to cardiovascular mm -hmm. health. I mean, it's just so, unfortunately, so common. Um, having those stories come up organically, you know, that's the easiest way to make those connections. But also, you know, this is still a networking event. You know, this is the biggest fundraising event in Richmond. So why wouldn't someone who owns a business want to be there? 
And so that's another angle to take. There's a lot of different angles to take, but you have to be strategic in that approach as well. Right. And so like, if you're like a small business, for example, right. And I've worked with a lot of small business over the course of my career. Um, and a lot of people have really big hearts, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they want to help a lot of entities, but so they end up um, having a hard time saying no, because they just want to help everybody. Be, but the, if you know what your purpose is, your impact can be greater. So if if you were, if, if let's say, you know, you have a sincere passion, let's say you have a, I'm just going to use this sure. as an example. Yeah, so. Let's say you're an internal medicine practice and, you know, you're dealing with a lot of patients who have cardio issues, possibly partnering with the American Heart Association of Richmond would be very strategic for you and would be giving your practice even more purpose and helping drive your purpose at the same time. That's demonstrating social responsibility. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Ryan, for one last one last question before we get out of here. What are people shocked with when they hear about the American Heart Association? Um, I think uh, the biggest thing, and this is the, a lot of nonprofits that have a national scale um, face this. And it's like, you know, especially now where people are looking and are we're really focused on on shopping local and eating local well they also want to give local too and so i think that when you know and again i'm still new so i'm getting this uh, i'm seeing new learning new things about this every day but um the fact that the money that we're going to raise through this campaign and at the heart ball it's staying in virginia it's helping the families that you see here it's helping um uh, the greater richmond area have better heart health and long-term uh changes so Yes, we're a part of a grander network. You know, they're based out of Texas, so not really neighbors here. But the focus that I have and the importance of the, of this campaign is that it's going to help the people that that walk through this door every day. There you go. One last time, how can people find you? Uh, the easiest way is email. Uh, Ryan, that's R Y A N dot Leitner, L I G H T N E R at heart dot org. I'm happy to take any questions about if. if um, leaders of impact, the heart ball, anything. If you have questions about the American Heart Association, I'm happy to help. I, I'm, I really feel good about this, this team. I, I love working here. It's only been two months, but I'm having a lot of fun and get to meet people like you guys. Yeah, it's, like, it's a lot of fun. Ryan is here in Richmond. Make sure you connect with them. He's part of the family. That's what we do. Tiffany Green, how can people find you? They can find me at our website, empowerpeople.org, M-P-W-R-P-E-O-P-L-E.org. And I, also- Go ahead. And TJ Green, so TJ is in Tiffany Joy, that's what it stands for, green with an E at the end at empowerpeople.org. And you also have, talk about the event that you have that we just had a couple, couple days ago. The Empower Hour. So the Empower Hour is our open office advisor hour. We have a panelist of advisors that leaders can come and ask any question they have regarding business, leadership, and management. Um, it was awesome Thank to you. have you last week, and we're going to be having our next event October 4th at 9 o'clock at Robin's Hope. And hey, shout out to good friends over at Robin's Hope. That's a, that's a dynamite nonprofit, <laughs> and they're growing, looking at getting a new building. That was, that's something. Oh yes, that's something. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you if you have you been there? Uh, not to no. Not well, to. wait till you go to the Empower Hours. You'll see their building and how how they're using every inch of space. Every inch of it. All righty, on the mic, the mic. Uh, it's always great talking to these folks. Make sure you support them when they're out there doing some amazing things. Uh, we got to go. They can't hang out with me here all day. They got stuff to do. All righty, take care. <laughs>